I recently scoured the internet for the absolute coolest apps for Mac, and I came back with seven of them, some of which completely blew my mind. Number one is iWallpaper or Wallpaper Engine. This is one of the most transformative apps when it comes to making your MacBook your very own. You can have animated backgrounds on your normally boring Mac desktop. There are hundreds, if not thousands of free wallpapers here for you to pick from, and loads of them are animated. There's anime ones, nature, tech, cityscapes, pretty much anything you can think of. And they don't take up much resources either because you can actually disable the animation when the desktop is unfocused. It is an instant dopamine hit every time I start up my Mac now. And because there's like a zillion wallpapers that are like two clicks away, I can change things up pretty much whenever I want. I think I'm gonna stick with the Kame House from Dragon Ball Z for now, but if I wanted to change my wallpaper, I'd open the app from the menu bar, pick a new one, download it, and then just click set as wallpaper. It's super easy. If you're wondering why I'm doing this with a mic in front of me, it's because Logitech is sponsoring this video with their new Blue Sona. Everything that you're gonna hear from me in this video is being recorded through this beautiful microphone. I'm a sucker for clean, modern design, and the Sona has that in spades in both the black and the white model. It's one of the best looking mics that I've seen, which is very important for streamers or podcasters that have their mics in the shot. I have the Sona mounted onto the Blue Compass, and because this mic has an adjustable mounting bracket that's built right into it, it's very easy to mount to an arm. It's not just well designed on the outside either. On the inside, there's a shock mount that prevents any vibrations from coming through in your audio, which by the way, sounds wonderful as you can easily hear. There's a dual dynamic capsule inside that both captures voice and helps reduce vibration so that your voice comes out crystal clear. The Sona has clear amp technology, which allows you to get fantastic sounding audio without the need of any kind of external booster, which means not only is your setup cheaper because you don't have to buy that extra component, it's less complicated too. As long as you plug into something with 24 or 48 volts of phantom power, you're good to go. It's completely plug and play. I use the Blue Sona for gaming mostly. I play a lot of D&D &D and having a quality mic for voice acting and narrating as a, either a DM or a player is extremely important. It really adds to the immersion when you're playing with someone that has a great mic where you can hear all of the different details details and intricacies of their voice without distortion. If you're interested in picking up the Blue Sona, I'll leave a link for you in the description down below. The next app on my list is called Sleeve. And if you're a music lover, you're gonna love this one. Sleeve docks a beautiful music player right onto your desktop that you can integrate with Apple Music, Spotify, or Last.fm. There are several different themes that you can choose from, but you can customize just about every part of it. You can change the size and corner radius of the album artwork or give it a glare. You can give it an interface for changing music or liking songs, change fonts and text sizes, backgrounds with shadows and transparency. You can really just dial it in however you like and it looks amazing. You can choose to pin it to a corner or you can just unpin it and drag it around wherever you like. There's even options for keybinds if you don't wanna go back to your desktop to change a song. And if you want, you can actually make the player float above full screen windows or make it pop up for a few seconds every time the track changes so that you can quickly change to a new song if you see something you don't like. It's a little bit pricey if you buy it through the app store like I accidentally did so make sure you get it from the website as a direct download instead for a little bit of a discount. App number three this one's kind of silly. It's called Hand Mirror. Let's just say you're sitting in an office meeting and you think you have something like stuck in your teeth from lunch, but you don't want to, you know, pull out your phone and sort of look at yourself. That's a little too obvious, right? Well, Hand Mirror gives you the option to use the camera in your MacBook to pop up a little tiny window that serves as a mirror. This is a mostly free app, but the most fun part for me comes through Hand Mirror Plus, which allows you to set the notch of the newer MacBooks as a button to activate the mirror. Do I recommend paying? Paying for the premium version for this feature alone? No, but it is fun. The next app is something that is almost essential if you work at night, and it's called Noir. It's an app that will automatically switch on a custom dark mode for almost every site you visit with Safari. A lot of sites don't have a built-in dark mode, and if you're working in the dark, they can really fry your eyeballs, especially when going from a website with a built-in dark mode to one that doesn't have one. Some sites do have a quote unquote dark mode, but they aren't very good, like Reddit's Safari page. Noir detects that Reddit has a dark mode, so it doesn't try and force their own, but you can actually override that in the extension and make the entirety of the page nice and dark. You can choose to have Noir activate dark mode all of the time or have it automatically switch when your MacBook goes into dark mode so that you can you know, have light during the day and then dark at night. It's great. 
App number five. This one was recommended in just about every single article I read as an app that is completely essential for Mac users. It's called Magnet. This is a fully featured window manager for Mac that allows you to easily move around and snap windows to various places. With this app, it has never been easier to multitask between apps on a Mac. You can split apps in half vertically or horizontally, split them into thirds, divide them into quarters. You can maximize a window by dragging it to the top and you can use keybinds to do all of it without having to use your mouse at all. It's very similar to how Windows does their, you know, window management and it's fantastic. It is a massive productivity booster when you're working with multiple windows on a Mac. It just makes everything so much easier and quicker. It really begs the question as to why this isn't the default for Apple. App number six. This one hurts my feelings on the daily and yet I still come crawling back to it time after time. It's called Carrot and it is by far the best weather app in existence. I mean, the very first time I installed it, it called me a meat bag. That was when I knew I fell in love with this thing. It is the sassiest, most beautifully designed weather app that gives a ridiculous amount of detail about the weather in your current location. It's currently telling me that the rain is going to stop in about 13 minutes and that I should drop to my knees and thank it. <laughs> it's hilarious. You can scrub along the timeline to view the weather for days or even weeks in advance and clicking on any of the days will pop up a more detailed description for the weather of that day. Carrot even has a built-in radar map showing where systems currently are and where they're moving. For example, I can see that there's currently a huge system of rain moving over the entirety of the UK, which is not surprising for the UK. <laughs> but you don't have to open the app to get some weather information either. It actually lives up in the menu bar and clicking on the icon will bring up a small window full of information about the current weather, you know, the forecast for the next few days and all that stuff. It's awesome. Number seven, I saved the best for last. This next app falls in line with something that's just all the rage right now, ChatGPT, the language-based AI chatbot that is blowing everybody's minds with its insane ability to give you an excellent solution to pretty much any problem you ask it to solve. Now, personally, I get annoyed every time I have to open Safari or Chrome and navigate to the chat GPT website when I want to, you know, ask the AI a prompt. So to solve that, I downloaded an app called Mac GPT. This is a free app made by developer Jordy Bruin, and it allows you to have a chat GPT client built right into your menu bar. Once you're signed into chat GPT with the app, all you have to do is click on the little chat icon and at any time you can get an instant response from the AI. There's no need for browser bookmarks or anything like like that, it just completely bypasses all of the nonsense and gets straight into the good stuff. Man, chat GPT is so cool. I could go on forever about it. Sometimes I'll need a combat idea for my D&D campaign. So I'll just pop open Mac GPT and ask the AI for ideas. Instantaneous results that are actually good. It's wild. It, it both excites me and scares me for the future at the same time. So those are my seven favorite apps for Mac users. If you feel like I've left anything out, leave a comment down below so that my fellow Mac users can benefit from your vast knowledge. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a great day.